Hello everybody, today I'm going to make a video where I will explain something which is very educational and I'm sure that will it will help a lot of you guys to become better at uh, the contest but not necessarily in terms of let's say learning new theory or learning how to become better at problem solving but instead helping you learn how to become better at debugging your code and especially how to generate test cases much faster than with many other ways you've seen before or you've tried yourself. So in other words, I'm going to show you how to write a stress tester in five minutes, a stress tester which will help you run a lot of test cases very fast and it will help you identify any potential cases on which your solution will get uh, wrong answers. And also it will uh, quickly write your input so that you can quickly go straight to the debugging phase where you will be able to fix your code. And for that I will also make a tutorial later on where I will show you how can you uh, become way better, way faster and way cleaner at writing code. But for today let's get started with stress testing. So what does stress testing mean? So Stress testing is basically a procedure which is used to generate many test cases and in these test cases we often use random data and uh, the data we use is given in such a way that we identify the mistakes that our solution, which is often supposed to be a fast solution, makes in relation to the less efficient solutions or maybe even a brute force. And this will be the main idea my stress tester will rely on. So in short, what my stress tester is going to do is that it takes two solutions, one solution which is slow and one but correct and another solution which is faster but wrong and test them on a series of test cases. I, we can choose how many test cases we want our solution to be tested on and it will keep testing the solution until it finds a test case on which the outputs of the two solutions are not the same. So in other words, we want to see when will our efficient solution be wrong so that we can take the test case from there and identify it in order to then go to where we had our main project so that we can debug that solution. So here is how it works. So First off, I'm going to rely extensively on the most modern tool used for test case generating, which is the Mersenne Twister uh, 19937 or 19937, but it's 64 bits. And the reason why we are using this method is, as I said, it's the newest uh, tool C++ language has, and it is the most, uh, efficient in terms of generating actual random numbers because as you may know if you want to generate random numbers with a standard function like RAND the number generated can be only of 15 bits because of how old the function is and there are many ways in which such a random generator can uh, deceive us by uh, showing us that there, our solution might be correct when they are not so therefore the need for a better random test case generator is there. Now in order to use this uh, random uh, number generator, uh, which is its 64-bit version, first we will need a seed because if we don't uh, create a new seed then the same series of no random numbers will be generated which is not really useful in any way. And uh, in order to create the seed we will use another function which is called random device. And this random device function is just another function which uh, works differently, but again, it generates a 32-bit random number, which will serve as our seed for our random test case generator. Now that we have this set, there is also another very important function we are going to use extensively, at least in my code, which is the val function, a function which will uh, take as a parameter a boolean, which will tell us whether we have a positive integer or not and if the integer in question is positive then uh, we're gonna return the absolute value of the answer otherwise we will return the answer as it is. If we want to customize this random test case generator we can always put something like 
modulo some number or we can also do that in the next function which I will describe. Now in the next uh, part of the code we will need to add the input data. So every any variable that we use in at least one of the solutions, ideally they will be local so that we can only use them in either the brute force or the efficient function. But any variable which is common for both of the solutions, I'm talking about stuff like the number of integers or the array or anything we generate must be declared somewhere globally so that we can use them in both positions. And ideally we might want to just copy the data so that we can use it in each of the solutions without any trouble. And in the generate test case function, the main idea is that we will declare our variables or use the variables we already declared. And let's say if we want a variable which is a number between 1 and 20, we can write something n equals uh, val. We can put 1 as a parameter because we want a positive integer modulo 20 plus 1. So this will return a variable which is a positive integer between 1 and 20. Because here we will have a number between 0 and 19 and then from uh, then an increment because this is the way we made it work. So again, all the other variables can be generated in a similar manner. And this works very well, especially when you want to generate, uh, let's say strings because the numbers are from one to 26 or even with uh, graphs and trees with extra logic. But in order to generate a graph or a tree, of course you need to already have some prior knowledge on how to generate graphs with certain conditions or with certain parameters. So this is not a replacement tool for generating graphs or other more complicated data structures, but in, for these things you need to use your skill, your already acquired skills in order to rely on this very advanced random number generator. And in these next two functions, the most important part happens. You put the slow solution in the brute force and the fast solution in the efficient. And basically what happens is that in these functions you can write your wrong, uh, here the correct code but slower code, and here the wrong code which is faster. And when you do these things you will have uh, the benchmark which is the wrong, slow solution which will be tested uh, against uh, the fast solution you have in such a way that you get to your final answer. Now. In case we've done everything right and we don't have any other errors, if there is a test case on which your solution fails, you can find it in the print input uh, in the print input function where you can do exactly the same thing you've done in the gen test function, but you will print the input instead, so that you can get straight away with the debugging in your other function. In, or in your main code because you want to eventually fix the fast code so that it gets an uh, accepted verdict. And now the most important part here is that you want uh, to create uh, more test cases. So ideally you should run the program multiple times, but from my experience, even running it once or twice yields test cases which are sufficiently strong in order to find bugs very fast. But again, you need to also be aware of the potential corner cases or other cases which uh, your problem uh, involves, is, in, is related to, but also to be careful with maybe generating one or two test cases according to very specific criteria so that you know that you cover all of the cases. This tool is also very useful if you want to, let's say, compete at some Olympiad or some other in-person contest and you want to see where your bug is, uh, but also, let's say, uh, if you want more certainty in a contest such as Facebook Hacker Cup or well, Meta Hacker Cup as it's called nowadays, you can also run such a test case generator at the expense of a couple of minutes. You can save yourself from a system test verdict because there you only have one submission. So again, a very useful tool and a tool I recommend especially to those of you who compete in uh, limited feedback contests because when I was in high school and I used to participate at the Romanian Olympiad, there was no uh, feedback system like 
the way it used to go was that uh, at the end of the contest they would take the source codes with an USB drive so you only had one submission and such a tool was es essential in order to identify uh, wrong test cases and it's a tool I use to this day even when I practice and I want to uh, not struggle with uh, debugging after I'm done with the obvious checks. So you need to first check for the obvious things in your uh, solution and then you rely on this test case generator. And as you can see here, when it finds a different verdict, it just prints the answers and the input. And as you can see, it's a test case generator which is very strong and the proof of its strength is given by the very powerful Mersenne Twister, but also a test case generator which can be written in five minutes and can be used in 10 minutes the same as the time it will take me to record this video or the video the time it took me to uh, record this video if you enjoyed watching this video please like the video share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel as i'm approaching the 5000 subscriber mark and stay tuned as I'm going to create many more videos in which I will explain various techniques, also various problems, easier problems, more difficult problems, all kinds of problems from websites such as Code Forces or USACO or general Olympiad problems. So I'm not going to limit myself to just one type of problems. But again, you need to subscribe to the channel in order for me to gain more visibility so that other people can benefit from the best videos out there. Until the next time, stay tuned, good luck in your coding journey and see you next time. Cheers!